Welcome to Revive Mercy Podcast. Remembering our wellness, tribute to Mental Health Awareness Month. It's the same theme as last year, but, you know, I just felt the title, the theme, it just just encapsulate when, when I think about recovery and the journey through mental health recovery. Remembering is a very important part. Remembering for is a very human thing, and it's a struggle for most of us. Just look at our candle calendars. Mental health has been a topic that can cause much distress for, amongst families and communities. Culturally, it's significant and overwhelming. Today, we start off this month with a new guest. Her name is Dr. Sweet. Um, Sweets, is it Sweets? Dr. Sweets? Um, yes. Wilson yes. Williams, a new guest to share her insight on this topic. Thank you and welcome coming on to the podcast. I really appreciate you sharing with us. Thank you. It's great to be here. <laughs> I always start off with a disclaimer of those who, you know, I have a lot of you, listeners and viewers around the world, but in the U.S., if you are in crisis, the you, the uh, suicide prevention lifeline is 1-800-273-8255. I always say this, Dr. Sweets, uh, people say it better than I do. And one person is David Spangler. He says, some people think they are in a community, but there are only in proximity. True community requires commitment and openness. It is a willingness to extend yourself to encounter and know the other. What comes to your mind when you hear this quote? This comes to mind something that I think um, a lot of people struggle, no matter what ethnicity, what culture that we come from, or geographical location, mm -hmm. or what gender or age or what have you. Is mm -hmm. this, you know, the kids have the new term now is called transparency. Yeah. We really struggle with that because mm -hmm. you see, you have to have a safe environment. We have to mm -hmm. create a mm -hmm. safe environment for people to be transparent. Yeah. And um, it's needed all around. You know, the yeah. safe environment comes first and then the willingness now to want to share because there's this benefits from sharing because mm. you might say something that I was thinking, but I didn't want anybody to know I was thinking like that. But then mm. now when you say it, I'm like, yeah, yeah. I said that, that sounds real good, but I'm <laughs> listening for the answer because mm. I, I had the same thoughts, you see, yeah. and it only comes from when we're able to be transparent. When we're transparent, guess what else happens? What happens? Healing occurs. Yeah. Okay, because that means now I'm taking ownership for yeah. whatever part I played. Mm. I'm allowing the universe to do what it does, mm. and I'm allowed to start the healing process, the healing journey. Mm -hmm. I can help someone else and say, listen, don't get stuck. Mm -hmm. You know, talk about it. Yeah. Or some people draw. They find mm. other avenues and ways in which they can release, release some mm. of that stuff. But the transparency starts with what? Being honest with yourself. Yeah. That's, that's key. Reflecting. Um, one thing I, I say, you know, I work in the mental health field is accountability is only a bad word when it's not a safe place. You know, it's a bad, we look at accountability as bad, but a lot of times when you're in a safe place, you encourage one another. It can be, like you said, one of the first steps to healing when you are transparent and reflective. Um, oh, I didn't do what I wanted to do. Well, does it make me a horrible person? Does it get me stuck? Or does it say, hey, I'm going to try again tomorrow? You know, sometimes it's overwhelming. Sometimes I'm working with clients and they say, I say, you know, just try to be better today. Just try to be better today. A lot of times I, the, the title is remembering our wellness. But sometimes, you know, I ask myself, why do we remember our pain? Why do we remember pain? Why do we even remember loss? This these last few years been hard for many of us. And like, just to even go further, why do we me remember mental health? Why does it matter? And it always comes down, at least for me, to the people, the people we love, the people right, around right. us. Right. Sometimes we make it so much more complicated. Mm -hmm. um, the transparency that you mentioned, um, I feel. It, it's a twofold because some areas, some people don't under, they're not exposed to it. So it's, it's understandable that they don't know, but this month gives an opportunity to remember and to reflect. I want to ask you, put it on to you, 
Remembering our wellness feels like an action. Why is it important for us to remember our recovery or our healing? In your own words. Okay, so if, if I can just dovetail a little bit to lead up into that. Yeah, okay. Um, the whole remembering our wellness. Mm -hmm. um, I, I still feel that even after COVID, the mm -hmm. term mental health yeah. is a stigma word. And I yeah. don't know why. Mm -hmm. I, I really don't. It's it's like it's well, it's it's like diabetes, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, it's okay to say I have diabetes, and and mm -hmm. no one is not going to invite you to their house anymore. They might raise their eyebrow when you go for that second dessert, knowing that you have diabetes. But mm -hmm. it's not that kind of a stigma. So why is it when we start talking or having the conversation around um, mental health, it, it it becomes like oh no 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 I don't have that. I I don't need that. Mm -hmm. You know um or looking at it as health and mm. wellness you see yeah. because not well mentally mm. it takes effect physically mm -hmm. it takes effect spiritually mm -hmm. you know it it plays out in our emotions with other people mm. it, it it does show up okay yeah. and 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 some of us are in such denial we don't we don't see how this it's like a i, I explain it like facebook Mm -hmm. You and I are friends, mm -hmm. but the third person is friends with you. Yeah. But guess what? Because you and I are friends, the third person gets to see my page. They may yeah. not be able to, to say anything, but they have access. Okay. Yeah. And that's how all these illnesses work. They are in. They're like threads. They, mm -hmm. you know, because the minute you start talking about pain, mm -hmm. the body remembers. Mm -hmm. If you don't work through it. You know, and that's something our, our company can help you with. If you don't work through it, the body retains it. And you know how I know that? This is when I made the connection. So we, you know, when we, the winter times, this is New England. Mm. I don't get to walk because I don't like walking in some degree weather. <laughs> yeah. So I go to the gym. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I had challenged myself one year to say, you know, when I first started, I mean, you really should have been there. It, it was hilarious to see me on this elliptical machine. Okay, <laughs> five minutes felt like five hours. I was mm. up and up and almost had to call the ambulance. It, it was terrible. It was terrible. Mm. But anyway, I hung in there, and within six weeks, I was doing sixty minutes on the machine. Mm. Okay, then you know life changes and things like that. I stopped mm. going. But then when I finally went back, do you know the muscle remembered mm. the the you know how to do it. Mm -hmm. I may not have stayed the 60 minutes, but I was really close to it because the muscle remember. That's the same way the muscle remembers pain. When we mm -hmm. internalize pain, something mm -hmm. that is a traumatic event, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's a car accident, a loss of a loved one, illnesses, mm -hmm. you know, just mm -hmm. life in general. And yeah. we don't talk about it in that safe space. Mm -hmm. The body re re retains it and becomes pain. You know how a person will know that the pain is not real? When you go to your doctor and you have all these exams taken and they say, miss or sir, we can't find anything. Mm -hmm. That's how you know mm -hmm. you need to come and see us. You're dealing with now. It's more, it's something else more than just a physical internal pain, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, Why I is feel... it... Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, no. Um, I was just going to say, um, is in the safe place. I, I always like to mention it as an illustration like a group of women who may be domestically assaulted. They have a support group. They share their stories. Nothing tangibly happens through their lives if you look on paper, but they feel better and they do better. Why? And like, uh, if you're trying to be just, you can't just think um, uh, just, you know, rationally or on paper, because there are certain things in life when I think about it. If I break my leg, I have to go to the doctor. I have to get it fixed. I got to get it set. But emotional pain, like you're talking about, emotional, those things are more individual, individualized, and those those things take time, you know. Mm -hmm. But and mm -hmm. I feel, I just want to mention that real quick. So you, yeah, continue. That's a good point. That. Very good point, point. and it leads right into why is it important to remember one recovery? Mm -hmm. If this is not a new thing, mm -hmm. it's something a reoccurring thing. Mm -hmm. Then you look back and say, if I was successful last time. How can I be successful again this time, but stay successful longer? Yeah. 
okay and that's all part of that recovery you know really understanding what that's like the recovery environment really encourages group um having at least one person or two people that you can share and uplift each other and encourage mm. each other it's just the same theory that we use when we tell people when they're going to go for a walk don't walk by yourself walk with someone mm -hmm. it makes it more enjoyable and fun as you mm. you know get yourself back into shape so um yeah yeah we, i just want okay no, I, I i think here we go COVID mm. really exacerbated the word fear. I really yeah. should have wrote, just wrote a book on fear. Yeah. It, and, and, you know, I caught myself. I couldn't believe it. Now, you know, I'm, I'm a licensed person, got five licenses. I should know better. Mm. Last year, I was in the grocery store and someone mm. came in and they sneezed. And without me even thinking, you know what I did? I left everything in the cart and left the store. Cause they mm -hmm. sneezed. Yeah. And when I got in the car, I said, what are you doing? Don't mm. you need those things for dinner? Mm. And I said, well, why did you leave? I'm really talking to myself now because no mm. one else is seeing this. Yeah. And I said, I know what it is. Cause they told us don't be around anybody. If they sneeze, you're going to catch the COVID. If mm. somebody coughs, you need to, you know, sterilize and move away and don't touch mm. no hands. Cause you're mm. going to catch the COVID. Mm -hmm. They created that fear factor. Mm -hmm. And, and, we all inherited it without even knowing it yeah you know so um, that helps again with the loss because yeah. we don't have the freedom anymore to move around like we used to right yeah 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 and you know i i like it that you bring up fear because a lot of times like you mentioned we we're talking about stigma we're gonna get into stigma the mental the mental health stigma that's present but i feel a lot of times deals with fear a lot of times we want certainty but if you're looking at hope you can't you have to have some degree of uncertainty to even have hope and the idea is sometimes i feel with mental health it's like diabetes you can kind of quantify you have sugar level issues and stuff like that with mental health it's a lot more individualized certain like a person's suffering with bipolar or anything looks different individual to individual and sometimes with a lot of fear they want some certainty why do people watch the news all the time they want some degree of certainty and the fear kind of consumes them i remember doing a group person said i watched the news from for onset of covid we're doing virtual support groups and a person said, i'm watching the news till 4 a.m and be, you, you'll be the most informed sick person i know the problem is we don't set boundaries the idea is that we won't know. That's the whole thing. We won't know everything, but we can build on what we have, what we do yes. know. And I just, I just think, in my regards, that's why I see in stigma because stigma is just such a huge topic. Mm -hmm. But I don't think it's just one area, one reason. Culturally, it has an impact, but the fear kind of transcends all those cultural boundaries because um, a lot of parents they they love their kids if they're struggling with mental health it's not that they don't love it they don't understand it and there, there's this kind of stigma in that so i'm questioning back to you how do you feel the community can approach this topic regarding stigma um, desegmentation of mental health we could start like we always do mm -hmm. when we're dealing with um different perspectives mm -hmm. different ideologies and, mm -hmm. and and you know you want to be respectful of all of that maybe from an educational perspective mm -hmm. or ask them their viewpoint. Like, you know, well, when you hear the word mental health, what does that mean to you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, what does that mean in your community or mm -hmm. in your culture? Is mm -hmm. that a taboo or mm -hmm. is it, oh, everybody has it. Well, right, we just pop a pill. I, you know, like, what, what does it really mean? Yeah. And, 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 and after we get that data, okay, mm -hmm. we can start the conversation flow, but I, I listen, I really, really think we need to start with the schools because you see, I'm very disenchanted. I'm almost heartbroken that my seventh and eighth graders mm. are committing suicide. Yeah. How do you help me understand that? Like you just started to live. You can't even work yet. So mm. what kind of stress would mm. you be under that you feel like taking your life? Now we're not saying sleeping, 
not mm. eating, you know, because you'll live through that. But to take your life, mm. and, and have we addressed that? That's mental. That's mental health. Yeah. Have we really, truly done a good job of that? No. And it's the same thing. It's that whole stigma. We don't want to talk about it that somebody in our family committed suicide, or mm. that uh, uh, an aunt or an uncle might have done it. So it could be something what we call generational. You know. Mm. Uh, mm. let's take a look at it have a conversation mm -hmm. I, I, I you know and, and so here we go what kind of community are we looking at yeah. are we looking at the faith-based community are we looking at the social co community you know people that go to like these social clubs and things like that mm -hmm. they have membership are we looking at the fraternities and the sororities you know yeah. we're looking at the nonprofit community what community are we looking at to help us break the destigmatization towards mental health mm -hmm. and I, I it's it's a huge question you know it's a huge question with I feel the I like what you meant when you're talking about defining words I feel like even myself when I reflect I define what things mean for me when I say stigma what does that mean for me when I say mental health what does that mean to me why you know, there's 1980s i believe ptsd was first put in the dsmv i believe and um you got it <laughs> yeah and they said before that it was a weakness it was a weakness the whole thing and you gotta look at you know contestually look at like the wars before i was in the military during 9 11. look at the wars before and look about all the people coming back from vietnam my, my father was in vietnam you think about um you know Pull yourself from the bootstraps, you know, just do, you know, this kind of, and for me, when I see people who don't understand it, who are older, I get it. I feel like it, it makes no sense that they would, you know, from their context where they grew up. So I feel allowing a safe place is not just for the people, it's for everyone. It's, yes. it's for the people who don't understand it, because honestly, this is fairly new for a lot of people. So I feel that and defining words especially those communities don't are not exposed to it that's a great way because words sometimes you say the same word it means very different for different people you know that's right. uh, when it comes to fear i want to get into i'm not trying to jump around but i i remember reading your profile dancing with bipolar dot mm -hmm. com i want to ask you could you tell us a little bit more about what that is and to the, to the listeners and everything like that Okay, so so bipolar, all right, is mm. is pretty much episodes of mood swings ranging in from depression lows mm. to what we call manic. So let, let 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 me explain that. Here's how here's how you know, even if yourself you're mm. suffering from depression. I always like to use the analogy of you're in a room and you turn off the light. Mm -hmm. What level of darkness mm. are you dealing with? Mm -hmm. Do you have a little bit of light coming through? So it's like a gray room. It's just like a softness and you want to relax. Mm -hmm. or, or are you feeling that you have to, you want no light at all? The, and matter of fact, you put your hand up to your face. You can't even see it. Mm -hmm. It's that pitch black. If you're there, now that's what mm -hmm. we call the major depression, right? Mm -hmm. If you're in the part where it's in the light area, the gray area, it's a start, the onset, okay? Mm -hmm. Because it becomes a mood swing. Mm -hmm. And you know it when you lose certain desires that you used to do. Like maybe mm -hmm. some people like gardening. They mm -hmm. like walking or reading, listening to music, eating, mm -hmm. my favorite, you know. <laughs> but when you no longer want to do these things, people take notice and they say, oh, everything all right? You go, yeah, 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 yeah. Sleeping a lot. Mm -hmm. How about, oh, my favorite. If I ever say, I don't know what to wear. You better, you better start checking if I'm <laughs> taking my meds or something because I got so much clothes. But that's the start. They don't want to bathe. Mm -hmm. They don't want to change their garments and things like that. So you know, uh, you know, and, and and the manic is the the dipping of mm -hmm. the mood swing. So like you and I could be talking and everything is going well, and you mm -hmm. think, oh, this is a great conversation, and all of a sudden you say one word that I might perceive that that's not a good word, and I get real angry you know and mm. offensive and then i'm lashing out it becomes that manic behavior you can't mm. take them nowhere because you don't know how they're going to behave that, mm. that's how it's described and um 
you know, the, the manic behavior looks like this. You can have great energy, like, like you drank a whole case of a uh, red line or mm. red bull, you know, mm -mm. um, or, or, and, and you don't want to sleep. Yeah. You have all this energy, you lose touch with reality. That's mm. the manic behavior. Okay. And, um, the depressive episodes, uh, shows itself by low energy. Mm -hmm. Can't lift your head up off the pillow. Mm -hmm. um, withdrawn, no motivation, things like that. So when we look at that, they have a diagnosis that they call, if you have those um, symptoms mm -hmm. and, and they have criteria to go with those symptoms and you meet the criteria, then you could be diagnosed with the bipolar. However, they do have medication. Mm -hmm. I'm not pushing medication. Okay, mm -hmm. What I am saying is some of us, because mm. of our DNA structure or, you know, just the way that we're wired, the medication could help stabilize. Then you mm. wean off and take a more holistic approach. Mm -hmm. That's that. That's an option mm -hmm. for those people who say fatally, no, I'm not taking no medication. Mm. Then, you know, you only are going to left with a holistic approach yeah. because mm -hmm. you still have to do something. It's yeah. not going to go away. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And like, um, you this um dancing with bipolar dot com. That's something you created, is that correct? No, I didn't create that. Oh no, no, you didn't? Oh. Okay. No, 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 no. I my website is uh IME Ministries dot com. Okay. I apologize. But um you know, I loved how you described the whole bipolar and how you know, illustrations for me, I feel for a lot of us, it's very you know, especially if you're not used to this kind of area, mm -hmm. it can be very helpful. Um we talked about reflecting. We talked about um, kind of thinking about what, why, why these things matter. Sometimes if we don't do this enough. Sometimes we get stuck in a toxic comfortability of oh, things are just the way they are because of the way they are. There's this one word in Welsh is harath. It says a homesickness of somewhere you cannot return to, the nostalgia and the grief of a lost place of your past, place that never were. Some of us kind of get stuck there. You know, we look and when I go back to my hometown and I'm, you know, everything looks smaller. Sometimes when we look at our lives, we kind of set the bar so low when it comes to wellness. We forget our recovery. We stop remembering what did help us. And that's why I feel it's very important for us to remember and actually, you know, ask these kind of questions and this kind of conversation. A greatness, the greatness of a community is the most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members it's not a, like sometimes i you mentioned uh i i i've learned um from was it um i forget where who i think it was uh, benjamin franklin or one of them they said teach someone they may remember tell someone they'll forget involve them they will remember involving people in the whole process when it yes. comes to learning that's how it works you don't you doesn't tell people facts don't impress me anymore i'll tell you the truth what really impresses me when people are able to adapt to change and we're all we're surrounded by change why and i'm gonna throw a question back to you and i want to ask why is community involvement important in the process of re remembering i know we've been kind of talking about that but and what would you like more important what would you like people to remember regarding mental health today the second one's well, a little bit more i would love them to remember <laughs> that you had on your show dr sweets wilson williams from inspire me who was a professional faith-based therapist mm -hmm. who provided transformational coaching who offers mentorship to develop strategic leaderships and entrepreneurial development to achieve physical stability that's the key physical stability okay i also really really do enjoy what i do and i like to help people illuminate their underestimated strengths while identifying those self-limiting roadblocks so whatever the roadblocks are you know we have to first find out what they are so that now we can work on them together because mm. just like the community you know, it's, it's, it makes no sense I come with all this knowledge and all this evidence-based modality treatments and all that kind of stuff, and, and, and you don't want to do it. It's mm -hmm. not going to work. I need your participation. And I also 
as a clinician do need to hear clearly what it is that you say you wanted, you see, and to see if we together can deliver that. All right. Yeah. So. Yeah. And I, I, I was just looking up this one you, you were talking. I just remember this one. Alice Walker says it really brilliantly. She says the most common way people give up their power is by thinking they don't have any. When they're in mental health, a lot of times, whether you're even working in mental health, a lot of times you feel, you know, limited resources. You're working with clients or whatever the case may be. The clients themselves, the family members are like, well, you know, but, you know, what you're talking about, you know, a lot of times people, I remember conversations or just people easily give up their power like oh this is just out of my hand but like a lot of times when we're overwhelmed it may seem that way but little steps that you mentioned the holistic approach i always find very very helpful um how but do you know you... People, wait, 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 just, just to piggyback on that people give up power not knowing that they gave it up because they didn't even know they had it to begin with yeah you know we have to always acknowledge that sometimes um, it's the perception that we have of ourselves. You know, mm -hmm. if you don't feel that you are an empowered mm -hmm. individual, you know, mm -hmm. Maslow's hierarchy, you know, if yeah. you haven't gotten to that self-actualization stage mm -hmm. and look how long it takes us to get there, mm -hmm. then, um, yeah, you give away a lot of things without realizing. But if you're mm -hmm. on the journey to wellness, mm -hmm. to wholeness, you will encounter those things that were mentioned, you know, Maslow's law, high hierarchy, you know, and, and, and how to create a community that will empower you to exercise your power. It's, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a, it's, it lends for a positive outcome. Yeah. And the, I, the idea that our external issue, there's always going to be life events. There's always going to be external things is how we perceive them. That mm -hmm. really sets us apart, allows us to adapt, to change. I remember when I used to do track and I'm like, you know, you're young and you're doing track and you're like, oh, I have to do all these sprints. But if I remember, if I thought to myself, okay, this is going to really hurt. This is going to really be bad. If I prepare my mind, I get my mind to the right mindset that, you know, this is going to be hard. Sometimes we fool ourselves. We, we don't even give the process that, okay, this stuff may be hard, but this is part of the process. Not saying, you know, we, and I remember this one word I'm, Vasi Lando is traveling when the experience itself is more important than the destination. It, yes. <laughs> so I feel um, my wife has this book. It's untranslatable words in other in other countries, uh, in other language as they mean. And I feel this word. I know a lot of Latin American people will say it's different, but it basically has the same essence. This idea of when you go to you know a lot of us depend on our GPS. When you mm -hmm. throw that away, you turn it off. You just go. You just go for a drive. I forgot when this COVID happened, me and my wife were, I was in the house. I'm like, you know what? I just want to go for a drive. I just want to drive around and just get clear in my head. And you want to come with me? Throw the map behind you. Just drive for a little bit. This is incredibly, incredibly free. And sometimes we don't realize, like you said, don't even realize we have that, you know, that choice. Yes. Like, well, young, I have to, I have okay, to so that. let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, uh, Brother Cologne. How old were you when you realized that you could really say no and not feel guilty? <laughs> it wasn't that long ago. It was I okay. Say, uh, see, yeah. see how long that journey was? Yeah. And that that's uh, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. good. The audience needs to know that it, it, it's not easy. It's a journey. It's a journey. But I we feel can all reach it. I feel like I get concerned when there's an arbitrary time. You know, the idea is that the journey itself, sometimes some some steps you might get through very quickly. Some mm -hmm. other avenues might be taking a little bit longer. But when you invest in yourself, when you say, you know what, I, I, you know, one thing I ask my clients sometimes, do you have a hobby? Oh, I, I don't deserve a hobby. What do you mean? Yes. Like when you're able to say to yourself, every day can't be a crisis situation every day cannot it's not sustainable you know you're, you're allowed to have hobbies you're allowed to have fun even though you may not think you you're allowed to smile you're allowed to connections and build on them positively um, so you give them the permission that they can actually live life on life's terms. yeah 
Wonderful. Sometimes they feel that they they miss, you know, they make mistakes. Haven't we all made mistakes? Let's yes. be honest. <laughs> so any uh, like, um, you know, I think we covered a lot. I just want to hear any final thoughts you want to share with those listening. You know, this has been a wonderful little chat on mental health, but more about just how we view it, how we define it in our lives, how we define it with our families and communities. And I feel those are the little steps that may help destigmatize what is already stigmatized so much. Well, you know, the way we at Inspire Me, um, we ask the question, you know, what is your purpose? Mm. So we, we, we approach it from a very non-intrusive way, you know, and then we ask you to let us help find you your passion. What is mm. it? You know, to become self-aware, mm. to improve relationship with others, make better decisions and develop creativity in all aspects of life. Yeah. You know, creativity I mean, you could be sitting on a gold mine and don't even know it, you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, I do want to say, though, we do have we, we do have some openings at this time for the transformational coaching program, for the mm. mentorship program, and for the um, entrepreneurship program. And what that does, the entrepreneurship program, is that we take it from the point now where you actually have a product and we get it on the show. So, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of other programs offer all of that upfront stuff and then... Mm. They teach you, they tell you about the business plan and all that kind of stuff, and then you don't have no product. Mm -hmm. So then you come to us now and we'll get the product and put it on the shelf. We take it to yeah. the next the next step. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We take it the, the next step now to to finalize and, and you visualize the fruits of that. So um only thing I can say is, you know, let us help you achieve the positive change that you want for your life mm -hmm. and overcome life challenges by contacting mm -hmm. I don't know. Did you put my? Yeah, look, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna put it on the notes, but um, it will be in the notes. Those who are listening of this episode, you just scroll down. You'll be able to click it, find out all the information that that um, Doctor Sweets is talking about. I do encourage you to check it out and see how you know how this may be the one of the big steps forward in in, in saying you know what I want to do more for my I want to. I want to say I, I can do more, and this may be, this may be an opportunity for that. So those who are Why listening, not? give it a try. Yeah. Here we go. What do the, either one of us have to lose? Exactly. So it's I, a I, journey I, in life together. Yeah. I just want to say thank you, Doctor Sweets, for coming on and discussing and sharing. You know, this month, notably, you know, when this airs, but um, is a month to remember, and it's not to remember. I liked how I said it, remembering our wellness, not remembering our mental health, <laughs> remembering our wellness, remembering yes. the positive, because at yes. the same time, uh, I feel just as much as there's so much suffering, there's also, there's like uh, Helen Keller said, there's also overcoming it. Helen yes. Keller's quote is amazing because she was, she was limited in her way to communicate and she still communicates today to all of us. Um, yes. And I feel... I just want to say that, um, thank you again, Dr. Sweets. I will share all the information in the notes. Those who are watching, listening, remember to stay updated with all Revive Ministries through the various platforms. But the website usually has all the connected Revive Ministries FL .com. It's our website. This is goodbye for now for Revive Ministries Podcast. I usually try to get, uh, I find my success by having returning guests. So don't feel surprised if I contact you, Dr. Sweets, again. But they, I just want to say... It'd be my uh, pleasure. Leaving this last quote, because I always feel people say it better than me. It's from Oscar Wilde. The smallest act of kindness is worth more than the grandest intention. So true.